this is from a viral video a few weeks ago where somebody's child did an experiment where they put eggs into different beverages to see what would happen to the eggs. Now this one was put into Hawaiian punch, so obviously they were using this to fear monger about what it does to your body. Obviously our bodies are not made of eggshells and we're not soaking our teeth in our beverages. So no, this is not going to happen to your body. This is not going to happen to your teeth if you drink Hawaiian punch. However, I was wondering why this did happen when it was submerged in the Hawaiian punch. Now I know that Hawaiian punch does have citric acid and citric acid reacts with calcium carbonate, which is what the eggshell is made of to produce carbon dioxide, water, and calcium citrate. All right, so it's been about two and a half days, about 60-ish hours. So here I have different solutions of citric acid in water. I have eight ounces of water in each, one gram of citric acid, three grams of citric acid, and 10 grams in this one. And then here we have eight ounces of Hawaiian punch. You can see obviously there are more bubbles on the three grams and 10 grams because there's more citric acid, which is reacting with the calcium carbonate to produce those CO2 bubbles, which cause that egg to float. Whereas the one gram, there aren't as many bubbles. And so it's not floating. So carbon dioxide plus water creates a weak acid, carbonic acid and that can dissolve calcium carbonate. So what I think is happening is at that surface, that calcium carbonate is being dissolved. And then once those CO2 bubbles rise and the carbon dioxide decreases, that calcium carbonate is precipitating out. And that's why you see it forming all these different structures on the eggshell. You're left with a very odd looking shell. And actually that's how stalagmites and stalactites are formed. This is sort of how that happens and why you're getting these weird formations. So that has happened on the entire shell here because there was enough citric acid to create more bubbles on this shell. Whereas in the one gram, there's not as much citric acid, so it's only creating bubbles on a part of the shell. So the 10 gram citric acid, that's enough citric acid to react with all of the calcium carbonate. This isn't happening on here because the citric acid is essentially dissolving that shell. So you don't have any calcium carbonate left to precipitate out of that solution. Now the Hawaiian punch has even less citric acid than even the one gram solution here. Obviously this is a lot more difficult to see. There are some bubbles that have formed on the eggshell at the top. All right, so I got a new glass full of Hawaiian punch. I'm gonna transfer this egg into the new glass of Hawaiian punch. That is starting a little bit on the top of this egg. Definitely not as much as the citric acid solutions. I'm definitely not getting the same results in the Hawaiian punch as that experiment that I stitched originally. So we'll see what happens as this sits in here for another 24 hours. I'm also going to attempt to take this three gram one out because I think it's pretty much done. This stuff does come off very easily. Oh, you can see the egg cracked there a little bit too. Eight, there's still some eggshell underneath still there as well. I'm gonna let that dry out. I'm gonna leave this one in there for a little bit longer. I'm gonna leave the 10 gram in there for a little bit longer. And then obviously I'm gonna leave this one in that new batch of Hawaiian punch for another 24 hours or so. 